Oh, hello, how's it going out there, everyone? Hopefully you can hear me okay, see me okay. And of course, I need to mute myself because I can hear myself if I don't mute myself. How's it going? Streaming here. It's my first time dual streaming to two locations. Don't tell anyone, it's a secret between you guys and me. But we're doing this live tonight. If you want to join us on Twitch, join the chat. Uh, Twitch, Medallion Stallion. I've been told that's a bad name. Maybe I'll change it at some point. But that's my name right now. Um, welcome everyone, hope you're doing well. We're gonna do some coding, we're gonna do some data science. I have a few ideas of what we can work on tonight. I'm very excited about it. It's been a few, what, weeks since I last streamed? But we are getting back to it and I'm trying something new here. So, hey, welcome everyone. Meme Clear Bams, welcome. Oh, Jigga man's in chat. We got a bunch of people in chat, by the way. Please join. You got see. Oh, I'm pointing the wrong side. It's over here. All these chat people. That could be you. That could be you. You could be on the stream. If you just uh, say what's up. Jav, what's up, Rob? How are you, my brother? Long time no see. Exactly. Where's my 3090, by the way? You got to win the competition to get your 3090. I don't give away GPUs for nothing, man. You got to do something for me. No, but um, speaking of which, I just realized I need to be talking to someone soon about our next competition. Uh, I used your resume to apply for IBM Jobs Medallion Stallion. I got, <laughs> I got it, but now I don't know what to do. Meme, meme beer. I can't say your name. Meme clear bams. That's a really bad idea. Taking on someone else's identity to apply for jobs? Uh, it's out of sync. The sound is out of sync. So is my voice... Okay, so my voice needs some delay. My audio for my voice needs some delay, I'm guessing. How delayed is it? Let's see. Let me double check. Okay, yeah, it's really delayed. It's be Maybe it's because of the... Let me add this. Let me make this up to 500. Not sure if this applies automatically, but let's try it. A. Try one second. Okay. Someone's suggesting one second. I just don't know if it goes automatically. Hey. Test. One, two, three. It looks better. It looks better now, right? Are we doing better? Can you hear the music in the background? I am streaming on two platforms. I'm just, we're, we're working out the bugs tonight. Try 1.1. It's not enough. One. Are you noticing a difference at least? It's way better, okay. I like that, I like that you guys tell me. So I'm very particular when it comes to that sort of stuff. Like if if I'm watching a movie and I can't see like 110% of the screen, or if something's messed up with a little bit of the audio, it can really bug me enough that I won't watch things. So let me, let me bump up this delay even more. Tell me this is better. Oh, you said it's perfect, oh geez. So I totally feel you guys. I don't want no anyone to be turning off the stream because I'm a little out of sync. I mean, I might be out of sync just as a person. Hey, thank you for the, what do we got? Follow? Yeah, the delay I'm noticing is really big on the mainstream. But uh, Rye subscribed with Prime. Thank you, Rye, for subscribing. Hey, you know what we do on this stream? Let's get it. Let's get to the other view. You know what we do on this stream? We spin the wheel of destiny every time I get a subscriber. By the way, those of you on YouTube land, subscriber in Twitch world is a little bit different than a uh, subscriber in, in uh, YouTube land. So I'm talking about Twitch subscriber. 
Yes, we spin this wheel. Should I put the dark theme on? It might be cooler with the dark theme. Okay, so type pizza 100 times. That I've done a bunch. Hey, MGF, X resubscribed with Prime as well. We got a four monthers and a seven monther. Right. MGX, thank you guys so much. So I got to spin this thing twice. I know we're going to do data science, but I mean, the wheel waits for no one. I can't just pretend the wheel does not exist. Ooh, almost on play a one minute chess game. I'm going to have to do 10 push ups and let's spin it a sec second time for you, MGX. Type pizza a hundred times, my favorite. What should we do? Should we do the pizza first? I gotta find my pizza, here it is. Look, so far on stream, I've typed pizza to 1,200 and we're gonna do another hundred. While I'm doing this, everyone, how's it going today? Hope you guys had a long, a nice long weekend, those of you in the uh, US. So let me talk a little bit about what the plan is for the stream while I'm typing pizza. Uh, we were working some weeks back for about a month. We had been working on trying to extract chess positions from video. And the way we were doing it was leveraging the fact that a lot of chess streamers and a lot of chess videos on YouTube have the board being played. And then they also have the, the truth, the ground truth above uh, that shows like an, like an online version of what a chessboard looks like. And we were able to take that image and extract out the actual board from the chessboard and then also extract the cropped um, ground truth board. And the, the idea I had at that time was, hey, let's use that to create a machine or at least a data set. There we go. There we go, 100. Uh, nice, a chess model, he, Thomas says. Yes, you are right. Um, we gotta do 10 push-ups, right? Let's go ahead and do that. This is embarrassing, but. Appreciate it. MGX. Those pizzas are for you, man. Those push-ups are for you. Uh, thanks everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You don't have to, but I appreciate it. If you do, you don't get a, you don't have to watch ads ads if you subscribe on Twitch. Um, what else is there? Oh, I want to mention the fact that I'm wearing this shirt from Pet Pretzel Mania. I went to a Rubik's Cube competition this weekend. And uh, I didn't make the cut, but my son did. It was really fun. He, he made like the finals of Rubik's Cube competitions. It was really fun. It was a really fun event. But um, okay, so let's, let's pick up where we left off. So before we had created, and I think I have, I think I had a a GitHub repo, of course I did. This chessboard vision repo where I was pushing most of my code. And why is the screen not? Hold on one sec. Scoot that over a little bit. There, now we can see it all. So we had this chessboard vision code where we were actually pulling out and extracting the board, determining the PGN position, no FEN position. That's like a notation they use in chess to describe what position the board is in. Not necessarily the moves that have been taken to get to that position, but, but, um, what the exact position is at a given time, right? Um, then we created some code that could actually extract out. So let's let's go ahead and go to my 
my uh, term, my handy dandy terminal. I'll make this a little bigger for you guys. I'm gonna make a new tab in Tmux. I'm gonna go into my repos. I'm gonna activate my Kaggle 2, I guess. And then I'm gonna start up Jupyter Lab session. I already have one running here, but I wanna shut this one down. So what else is new, guys? You excited to get back into this? It's gonna be fun. Okay, so I I realize that I have a flaw, like many things, in many things, I have a flaw in my thought process of how I could create this data set. Because I was thinking on YouTube, they have all these different videos of games being played. That's a ton of training data. That's perfect. But the problem is, even in a game that could last an hour long, if at most it's like 80 or 90 moves, the pieces don't move that much. So essentially you have a, a bunch of still moments in video form. And I don't think it's gonna cut it is the thing. So I wanna back it off a little bit and start looking at, oh, let me look at the right repo. I want to start describing this as like a more concrete problem that we can actually solve here. Chessboard vision. Here we go. Let me just show some of you all that are new to this project. Some of the work that we've already done. Hey, thank you for the following Pika B. Pika B, you are part of the family. Every time we get a new follower on Twitch, I say welcome to the family because that's who you are. You are a family member. Um, so we were doing stuff like this. We wrote this main code base that um, allowed us to like feed it in a YouTube video of people playing, extract out this ground truth board, run a neural network model that took this and converted it to a PGN position, FEN, keep on saying PGN. So look, this, this, Example, it would do it for a, the whole video. So it'll go through and we you, you have to tell it where this ground truth board, board is, but once you do, it extracts it out and it converts it to FEN. So I could take this FEN from this example and use the chess Python package to plot out what it looks, or to display what it looks like, and you can see that it's pretty much the same. Now, one thing that came up when we were doing this is the fact that sometimes when this board is moving in the video, there's animation. So if the king castles, if there's a castling going on, You'll actually see it move for a few frames before it ends up in this position. And same thing with the rook. So there was a there's a little trick to get around that. And that was basically only counting the moments where the piece was in the same position for like a minimum of X number of frames. I forget what threshold we picked. So at the same time that we were cropping this ground truth board, we're actually cropping the, uh, I call this IRL or real life board, right? So what we ended up having, having was like an FEN position associated with this. So this is the, the position we pulled out. These are the pieces on the board. So we want to have the ultimate goal is to create an algorithm that can look at this. Like imagine having an app on your phone that you could place and just get in a good position looking at the chessboard and that it would be able to tell you what the position is and then tacking on like um, stockfish or something onto that should be pretty trivial at that point. But the heart, the hard part is determining where 
the pieces are. Oh, this is when we were trying to automatically detect this ground truth board and using CV2 to try to like detect edges, which will tell you where maybe the board exists. We kind of hit a roadblock on that one. But I hope that gives you sort of a background of what's going on. Like this is the ground truth uh, video for game. So again, going back to this, this point that I was not thinking this out thoroughly. This is a video of the ground truth board. Hey, math XY, welcome. What's your XY coordinates, math? math. Welcome to the family, by the way. So you see that for this video, they aren't moving for a good minute here. This is video, but it's not really helpful to our model, our machine learning model to see uh, a board that doesn't change. What we really need to feed our model are a bunch of different positions. And I think I'm getting to the point where I've decided maybe a better angle on this is to try to automate some sort of board setup and to do it uh, like to make these images of these positions automatically, then train the neural network on that. That's just my idea right now. It probably will fail too, um, but at least I have the code base to do the second part. Then, then I think the cool thing will be to take whatever model we create in the controlled environment and see how well it does here. Now there's a few things to keep in mind. The angles of the pieces, the boards can be very different. The pieces themselves can be very different. So I think for right now, I'm trying to stick to like the standard chess set. The, I guess they, I don't know if it's called like a scholastic chess set, but the ones they use in most tournaments, that is what I am planning on focusing on first, not like wooden chess boards. Hey, David J, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? Guys, let me know in chat what you think. If you think I'm crazy. What if we label and then YOLO V5 with active learning on this? That's a great idea. That's kind of the angle that I wanna go a little bit. So let me show you some cool things that I've been working on. That That's perfect though. I'm glad you said that, Thomas. So um, I've trained a YOLO V5 model. I'm in my YOLO V5 directory. I can go into my runs. Let's just open this, this directory up. And I've run a bunch of runs to train models on chessboard pieces. Now this obviously could be YOLO V7 or five or eight or whatever the heck the YOLOs are now. I just like the, the way YOLO V5 works. It seems pretty fast. And I use these this data set that exists with a bunch of pieces on the board with their bounding boxes. But I still don't think it's enough. So I train a model until basically until it converged with this. And let's, what I'm hoping here is that I won't break my <laughs> my stream. But what we're gonna try to do here is actually run this detect. By the way, let me know if the audio is too loud or anything. I hope the music is a good volume for everyone. I think it's fine for me, but. All right, so I'm gonna Python detect. I'm gonna use YOLO V5's detect to, um, let's use weights. Uh, let's just first try making sure this, this source actually works. So it's my third camera, or actually my main second camera here, sitting right here. There we go, it's running. You can see me, you can see the potted plant. It's a little bit delayed probably because I don't know what device I'm running on. You can see it's running on my first GPU, which is different than the GPU I'm using for streaming. I really gotta separate my systems, like the actual streaming system from my, the one I use to code but that's the problem for another day. What's this question? Uh, hi, this kind of projects are incredible to a person recently graduating computer science to me. Re recently watched your pandas tutorial. It was useful. Keep going like this. Thank you so much. Pika Bia. I like your username and welcome to the family. 
I appreciate that a lot. Please tell your friends. And if you're a computer science graduate, then the world is your oyster. Some might say that's such a dad thing to say, but, um, okay. So I'm running this YOLO V5 model using the base weights. And I have my pieces in here. I could also change out for my green board, but let's take some of the pieces out and just see if it can actually detect them at all. And I shouldn't, shouldn't drop them all over the floor, but hey, oh, and you can see my, my legs. Okay. Um, it's not detecting pieces because this model was not trained to detect pieces. Also just so happened to only pour out some of the white pieces. Yeah, Pika B, I really appreciate that feedback though. Any feedback I appreciate, as long as it's uh, not like super critical. <laughs> no, even critical stuff I'll take. I'm always like so encouraged by the people who do comment and mention stuff online. Um, yeah, like today, Siam si from H2O mentioned me in like a LinkedIn and a Twitter post, and I really appreciated it. He's such a cool guy. He puts together such great uh, content. Okay, so what is our object detection detecting right now? It's detecting what it thinks to be stuff like it got the couch right it knows i'm a person i think that these are just like the yolo the base yolo wait another thing is in yolo v5 i went in here and i actually edited it so that the size here it is so I set a larger height and width of the camera. This is in utils data loaders. So if I edit data loaders, I think that's why it's kind of slow. So if I do this divided by two, do I need to cast this as an int? Probably. So we're gonna do this. Cast this as an int. So this is like a little bit of a manual thing I did because their code didn't automatically change the resolution of my webcam. What's up ETSW? Okay, so here we go. Now it's loading much faster. I'm sure the frame rate's a lot more in sync, um, but the video is slightly smaller. I think it's worth the, it's worth the trade off, right? Is this Tmux? Yes, I'm running Tmux here. Uh, my beautiful Tmux setup. Um, I think my GitHub repo has has it described. Oh, hey, people in YouTube are chatting. Let me type. I'm streaming on YouTube and Twitch for the first time. Come to the Twitch chat to hang out we just moved to a new house painted repaired carried items etc i'm dying how about you guys Ooh, that sounds like a busy weekend but congrats on moving to the new house and getting all that stuff done i went to uh i was just telling people i went to a rubik's cube competition this weekend it was a lot of fun Um, so, okay, so what did we do? We, pi I ran, did I make a script in here for running this? Let's make a run.sh and it'll run python detect.py and then we'll do source seven, that's that webcam. Now I'm gonna actually do weights And this is where I need to open up another tab tab because I think it's runs runs dot train experiment 13 runs train experiment 13 
weights best dot p p t h or maybe it's just pt maybe 13 is the no it is 13 weights the screen is a little crammed here but we're going to make do maybe make it a little less crammed yeah so best that pt all right let's save this and load a tab below where I can activate YOLO V5. And then now I can just chmod x this run shell script. And now I can just run this shell script and I don't have to type that in every time. Uh, just moved, oh, ETSW is saying, ooh, cool. Nice. Hey, look what we got here. YOLO resize, then feed forward, in my opinion. Oh, I see what you mean. Resize to get the board size. And then just use a feed forward neural network to do the, do the position. All right, so we can see how this fails. Let's, let's, uh, Let's do a few things. Number one is Python detect Hey, Xcode, welcome to the family. You just subscribed. Thank you for subscribing, Xcode. You really did not need to, but I'll take it. By the way, you can subscribe with Prime for Frizzy for free. Um, now, because of that, Hey, Got Trev, welcome to the family. Because of that, I spin the wheel, right? I hope it lands on something good, Xcode. This is for you. This is for my man, Xcode. Type pizza 100 times again. Okay, while I type pizza, we can we can talk about a few things. Um, We're gonna see how well Are you the first to make a CV chess position enumerator? Um, so there, are, I have read a few papers on it. So people have definitely attempted to. My goal to, would be to make a product that's actually usable um, in natural environments. So some of the, pro the papers I've read had very controlled environments where the cameras we're basically static. So what I have right now, this example is a pretty static example, but I wanna just get it working. But the ultimate goal is to, hey, can we get this working so that you just whip out your cam cell phone and you can all of a sudden beat the hustlers in the park. That's for you, Xcode. Typed pizza 100 times. I've gotten pretty good at that. 1,400 so far. Gio Valenzuela, welcome to the fam. What up, fam? Okay, so not, not to get too distracted by this. I think that I can do... Hey, by the way, guys, on Twitch, you can uh, do exclamation point YouTube. Uh, to check out my YouTube channel, you can do exclamation point Discord to get a link to my Discord. If the camera isn't static, that's right, Ch Chito Bandito. So I think there's some, some going to always be some restrictions in how well it'll work depending on the position. Like if you look a lot of at a lot of chess streamers that play live in the park and stuff. The angle of the camera typically is low enough to get the people's, the view of the players. Like their expressions and their body movement and all that. Isn't, that isn't ideal for capturing the board because if you get a low angle, you get a lot of obstructed pieces that you're never gonna be able to detect well. But hey, we could, could find out that it's better than we think. 
Do you usually compete in NLP? I'm currently researching in QA models right now. I do some NLP. I wouldn't say it's like the main thing that I work on. All right, so arg parse. Let's see what this takes. Weight, source. I know I can change the like line size. Hide la labels, hide confidence, line thickness. That's what I want. Line thickness. It defaults to three. Let's make it thinner. And let's not mess up the IOU. Let's actually, let's see IOU threshold by default. IOU threshold is by default 0.45. We'll leave it like that. Oh, I also have to do it up here. And then confidence threshold. Let's make this, let's keep it at 0.25 also. All right, run.sh, run.sh. I guess I could delete. Oh, this confidence threshold needs to have a dash, not an underscore. Yo, Herbie Hoover, what's up? How are you doing in the chat? Thomas said, Bert? <laughs> you gotta use Bert if you're doing NLP stuff, right? I do think it's amazing how well Bert works like on everything. Um, let's see how well this is doing, by the way. If I hold this piece up really close to the camera, it does realize this is a white knight. For the most part, that looks pretty impressive. What do we have here? Why? See, why doesn't it detect the pawn over here? Is it because it's used to seeing it on a board that's a certain color? Because now it notices the white pawn. All right, let's get this set up. Hey, by the way, if anyone out there is into chess, chess drama, has anyone heard of the drama going on with the event in St. Louis? Magnus Carlsen dropped out of an event and alluded to the fact that his opponent may have been cheating, which is kind of crazy because do you have proof of that and today his uh opponent fired back and was like what's going on but it's it's drama and it's interesting drama no so the claim is that this person cheated he just today categorically denied that it was a fact Okay, I'm noticing something. It thinks this is a white pawn. Why does it think this is a white pawn? Now it knows it's a white rook. White pawn. Hmm. It does get pretty hard to see what's going on with these labels. Maybe we can find an interesting position that doesn't have so many pieces on the board put my other yeah think how bad that must feel if you aren't cheating and you just beat the best player in the world at your sport and then, then, then you find out the next day that person is claiming you cheated. Okay, so noticing some issues back here. Because there's a black background, I think, it's not able to pick that up. Maybe if I turn this. Hold on a second. This could be a bad idea.
And then Chess.com banned the other dude's account. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the other stuff is Hikaru was like throwing out there that he that he was banned on Chess.com because of cheating in prior years and lots of drama. Okay. So I actually want to get the the video to look larger. So let's do data loaders. And let's not divide this by two anymore. Let's go ahead and here, maybe I can do it like this. So we can keep that for later if we need it. 1080. Um, CD dot dot. You think my data is good. I just need more data and augmentation. Yeah, so this is step one, right? So I've decided the bigger view with more lag is worth it compared to the, the view that is smaller and you can't see everything. But what is going on here? Why does it think this is a white pond? Like this is not good enough to figure out the board position. Is it because these pieces are closer? It thinks there's a bishop for the queen. There's a lot of issues. So we can talk about how I plan to improve upon this. I think a lot of the problems are where when the pieces are in front of each other. Now let's do this. What if I, if I cover this up, does it actually help the detection for the other pieces? I don't think so. Also perspective, yes, that too. Pieces are obscured by the black behind them. I agree, BBS, not. What if I rotate this? Are the white pieces, is it gonna struggle with the white pieces or is it simply the contrast between the pieces in the background? Don't break anything. I've spilt full beers during streams before, and I don't want to do something like that today. So it seems to be doing better with the black pieces, but not really good enough. Now, let me show you what I've, let me show you all what I have done before, what I did prior. This was like a few weeks ago. So I kind of forget what I did. Um, what did I do? I, I went in trust board vision. I now have data that is labels. Oh no, these are the results of our YouTube video. Peace videos. I made these peace videos. So let me go create a new tab here. Repos, chess, chess board vision. Go into my data directory. Go into peace videos xdg open this. this is kind of embarrassing that some middle-aged man is videotaping chess pieces in his spare time but maybe top-down camera view yeah i think that the view probably is gonna have issues here's the thing to keep in mind chess board object detection data set I think part of my limitation, LOL APIs, welcome to the family. Thank you so much. I think part of the issues too is that this was the source data that I trained on. It was a data set that was freely available from RoboFlow, to, so shout out to RoboFlow. But it had all these pieces labeled in different positions and look at the angle that it's in. It's slightly more than what I have right now. So maybe that's part of the problem. I want to create my own data set though. So let's do this. Let's show you my embarrassing videos that I took myself. I took these purposefully with a green screen background, right? Because I want to be able to crop out the green eventually. And I purposely like moved all around so I could get different views. Oh, 
Oh, what's the Twitch? Some people are asking. Link here. Um, so the question is, can I give, can I create a, what if I ran object detection on one of these videos? Maybe that's a good experiment just to see. Going to train it in RGB. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. The top of the black pieces are scared. Oh, that's an earlier comment. Yeah, BB astronaut, that's pretty common, right? I mean, RGB is what most of these models will take in. All right, so I want this source to be, let's switch this source to be one of the videos. So that's going to be this directory. Uh, source. It's going to be this piece videos. And then what's in a good example one? We had the, the white bishop. Can this handle a MOV file? I think so. Let's do run. Um, okay, so it's working. It's running, but it's not. Let's do, what do we need to provide it? I think it's like display. Let's let's real quickly go to YOLO V5 page, go to detect that pie. Hey, super LOL. -E. Thank you for subscribing. Three months. Awesome. It's been a while since you've been here. Welcome back. Let's spin the wheel for you. I need to think about what I'm going to do on the wheel. Oh, if I go away from the wheel, will it keep spinning? Man, loves the pizza today. Okay, so type in more pizzas. Um, what I'm thinking about doing while I type these pizzas, let's talk about what's next. I'm going to run object detection on these pieces. I want to see if just giving it this weird green black background, I could change the color of the background too with some easy color replacement with CV2. But um, what I want to do is see if it first can detect the pieces even. Then I want to retrain with those pieces Maybe set the confidence threshold really low so it'll detect them for sure. Then create a new data set that I can train my model on using those and see if that improves anything. And maybe I should listen to you guys and actually do more of a top-down camera all right, there we go. Super LOL, that's for you. Visualize, I think that's what I need. Vis no, that's visualize features. I want display. Oh, I didn't know that I could do half precision. Oh, is that default true? View image, I think that's what I want. All 
All right, let's try running this with the view image flag set to true. It seems like a real challenge differentiating between the types of pieces. I agree. Why isn't it displaying this? Weird, it's not dis displaying it. I can open this directory. Look at my runs. Latest detection. Is this, okay, so this is not displaying in real time. Fire hydrant. It thinks it's a fire hydrant. That's awesome. <laughs> Why does it think it's a fire hydrant? I thought I was using the weights for this experiment. Shouldn't this be the weights that only have the chess pieces as objects? That's bizarro. Something's going on here. Let's make sure I save this. Oh, I know what's going on here. I know why none of this was working. I need a backslash up here. If I don't have a backslash after the movie file, then it's not gonna work. It's not wrong, it did put on the long. Uh, all right, so, whoa, that's really wrong. It thinks it's a white king? Now it thinks it's a b bishop. All right, so. Let's think through some ideas. How do we create this, these videos that I took, which I could take hundreds more of. I could take them on chess boards. I could do, I mean, not hundreds. I don't have all day <laughs> videotape chess pieces, but um, how would I get this into a YOLO V5? data set how would i create this data set and maybe what do i need to augment Ooh, what's happening here what do i need to augment like can i remove out that green background uh so create piece data set my normal imports let's make this bigger for everyone out there uh import cv2 hopefully you guys are enjoying this hey abishek we got abishek on youtube we got Red Raj, Rajesh, welcome y'all. We are hanging out on Twitch if you want to jump over there. Random color background. Yeah, I think that would be cool. That'd be a good augmentation, right? Um, so we need a video capture device. And we know the only pieces, maybe we need to run object detection in it. Um, go to data, go to piece videos. Uh, let's just use a black pawn. Oops. Image. Oh wait, this is going to return the return and, and the image, right? So if I go to image, Um, colors are reversed, so I need to do I think this should work. Yeah, that'll invert the colors. 
I learned this little trick recently. I learned it a while ago and then I forgot about it, but I learned it again. Does it need to identify pieces when on the board? Was thinking from the original p position immediately assigned piece. So regardless of piece, actual shape, color, it will recognize the piece. I think that might be the next step. The first step is like, can we detect the pieces? And then the second step is given the relative position of the pieces. Can we detect the FEN? It's going to be tough. I mean, it's not going to be easy to do that, but let me know if the, the font is big enough for you all to read. All right. This is our beautiful black pawn, black swan. Stop looking at me, swan. All right. Can we, how do we? Python remove green background. Yeah, I looked at this, this one before. It seems like too much. Making a mask and all that. Can't we just, can't we just remove the green? Or maybe there's some package that will do this without. this first convert to lab 
then extract A channel, then threshold A channel, blur, oh, they're using SK image. Add a mask. SK image has no attribute exposure. From SK image, import exposure. Now it'll work. Now, hey, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it, it converted to BGRA. Are you familiar with simulation in Python? Xcode, what do you mean specifically? I was thinking from the board, recognize the piece, so even we switch chess pieces to 16 checkers pieces, it can still recognize and track the chess movement. I see, so it doesn't matter what the piece is as long as it's tracking it from the beginning. That's an interesting approach. Knowing that you have a chess board on the frame, you can easily do some homography relative position tracking. Yeah. I think it's like the age old dilemma. Do you want to hard code it? Or do we want to let the model figure that out? Hey, people at YouTube, welcome. I trade, appreciate the kind words. So what are we gonna do here? We have an extracted out this I would love to just, here's the thing about YOLO V5 that annoys me. It doesn't really lend itself well to like creating an object or something within Python that you can then apply to. Um, that you can then apply to to predict. Oh, I want to do syspath append. So I'm going to append my path with this YOLO v5. And then I'm going to say from detect import. What is it detect? Let's see what this looks like. So basically this script from YOLO v5 parses our, our arguments and then runs runs this main, main checks requirements, and then run, it has a run fun function. From detect import run. Now we should be able to give it the weights path. from pathlib import path. Let's provide it the weights path, which is my repos directory, chessboard vision, no wait, my repos YOLO v5 runs, detect, no, train, experiment 13, weights, best. This isn't gonna work though. So the question is, what does run run? What does run do? Run takes a webcam, the image size. Where does it actually predict? 
this is the data set. This is the model. Detect multi back end. Where does it import that from? Detect multi back back end from models.common from YOLO V5 uh, models models.common so maybe we need to do it this way detect multi back end with our weights in our device Device is going to be like CUDA. And our weights is going to be this. Of course, it's going to fail. String object has no attribute type. So does weights need to be a path? Where is it failing here? Let's check this out. Device type not equals to CPU. So device might need to be zero. Let's check to see what device is when it feeds it into this device. CUDA device, example zero. Okay, so it runs this select device. Utils.torch. So we need to import this. So this is the device that we'll give it. There we go. Now we got a model. This isn't going to work. So our model takes in our input. Let's see how they run the model. DNN data and half why is it taking the data this is a warm up model i am augment equals augment and visualize equals visualize an augment is going to be false. Batch channel height width. That's the problem. So this image shape it doesn't have a batch size so this happens yes you got it thomas you got it thomas Un unsqueezing this baby actually it's expand it, in numpy is it's expand dimensions in pytorch it's it's uh unsqueeze and axis is going to be zero now the shape of this is a batch size of one Let's call this image Z. I think they use that terminology. All right, now what, what it's complaining about. What it complain of it. it? Must be a tensor. Okay, that makes sense. How does it convert it into a tensor here? Torch that tensor. Um, so we're gonna import torch. Torch that tensor. Uh, 
Okay, so something's really wrong with this because the image shape. Oh, the channels need to be first. So I need to numpy.transpose this image, right? Um, and it's going to be zero. Three, one, two. I don't know if the height and width are correct. Axis don't match array. Oh, it's image with a Z. So we took our image, we expand the dimensions, we transpose it, and then we make it, well, let's just make it into a tensor here. Covnet 2D forward not supported on CUDA type for byte. What? <laughs> FPS 16. GeForce 1080i. That's what I am on. Okay, so maybe I can't use floating point 16, but I thought the default was not. Um, let's see what it does in this code. Half by default is false. Okay, so I need this FPS 16, FP 16 to be false by default. So when I create this model, it's gonna be false. Can the thousand, 10,000 series, no wait, 1,000 series do mixed precision? I've done it on my, my device before, so I'm a little confused. Let's restart this just to be sure and clean some things up. Um, let's, let's import this directory below and then do YOLO v5 dot torch utils. Also here, YOLO v5, let's make it a little bit better, cleaner. From the top. Oh, this isn't going to work because all the dependencies. Let's just go ahead and do it the other way. Capture device, plotting the capture device. Um, it's complaining about my back end. Okay, let's run this again. Hey, JMS Skikes, welcome to the chat. How are you doing, man? What is this? Is it complaining about this? Does this need to be two?
There we go. There's our image. Move these imports up here. This is removing the black background. We'll show this. What we want to do is run our object detection on this. Try to run YOLO v5 object detection on this. You know what? I could just do it using the command line stuff. Because it saves the output as text. Yeah, it's complaining about this. Maybe I'd need to do FP 16 is true. Oh, you know what? This tensor probably needs to be half. Let's try that. Nope, that's not gonna work. Making an AI that can determine moves just from looking at the chessboard, that's the goal. You are well, you, I can just call you Jason. Okay, Skikes. Watch me call you Skikes after you ask me to call you Jason, sorry. Okay, Jason. We are going. Okay, so another option. Here's the other option. I can run the command line version and we can just do it from there, right? I can run this. I think I can provide it this, just the whole directory. And then I can do, let's also, mm, yeah. Python, no wait, run.sh. There we go. How's it going out there? Oh, I have the view image on now. So I believe what this is doing when it runs, it's saving an output video. We're on experiment 152, I believe. No, that's not right. All right, so it's going through each piece and it's running the te detection. It just finished the other video, now it's running this one. The problem is, I don't think this is out exporting it to the right spot. So let's do this. 159. Yeah, all this is doing is creating videos with the crops. Oh, sorry, with the object detection labels. So what we need to do is have it export it, export the actual um, frame and value. So I think that's a something in our detect.py, a config. No save, save TXT, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for and we don't want view image, so save TXT here. This way we don't have to look at it, but it's gonna run. It's gonna run in the background and it's gonna save which objects it detects. I should probably put the, I, let's do this too. Confidence threshold at 0 0.05. That way we'll make sure we'll get any predicted boxes, boxes for it. It'll be like really, really um, generous in what it predicts as a piece. And that's good for creating our I'll put, now we have experiment 161 and we have our labels directory. All right, so this labels, let's read these labels. Let 
Uh, from glob, let's import glob. Then we do repos. Yellow v5 runs detect 161 labels star it's going to give us all of our files let's make sure we're not listening to copyrighted music we'll get shut down This stream, this video I'm listening to says no copy or copyright free, but I still get dinged for it when I make YouTube videos using it. So hopefully this one's okay. All right, everybody, here we go. Here we go. Party people is a place to be. We're going to load in a bunch of. object detection on this let's call the name names is class then x y height width i think that's the format So then we're going to read this as our data frame. We're going to concatenate of all these bad boys. We also have to add in the label name. Are you already in ATL? What do you mean ATL? Atlanta? Leonardo, what's up? Welcome, first time chatter. I'm not in ATL. I do not live in ATL. So I need to split the file name out, right? And then split on this underscore minus one, no zero. And that's gonna be our video file, video. Yeah. And then 
We also need to pull out the frame from this. Strip out the tx.txt. This is our frame. We'll make we'll cast this as an int. I know this is ugly, but hey, it's gonna work. Equals video. And our frame is going to equal this. Now we have a data set. Let's also add in the whole file name. Oh, you thought I was coming to Southern Sata Science. No, I wish I was. What is, what's going on there, Leonardo? Oh, I see what you're saying, um, Thomas. You're saying I can export the model to TensorFlow and then use it that way. What's going on in Southern Data Science? Let's check this out. This looks like fun. Are you there right now? Oh, Bojan's speaking at it? Joel, I know this guy, I think. Mike Tamir, he was my, uh, he was my uh, instructor in college, in grad school. He was my instructor. That's cool. Um, Ashwarya and I spoke once. This is a solid lineup. I'll be there, my first data science conference. It looks like a good one. It looks like a real good one. How did I miss this? Look at all these sponsors. What's the talk that you're most excited about? I like how it says, <laughs> says 34 speakers in parentheses, including data science influencers. Why do they have to say that separately? All right, I'm not even sure if this is X, Y. This could be X1, X2. Ooh, influencers. I'm getting excited. It is X, Y width and height. I was right. I guess it makes sense because it's height. Oh, oh, so I wasn't right. It's width, X, Y, width, and then height. Okay, so now in theory, we can pull this file name, go to this frame number. Let's sort values by Go to the first frame of the Black Knight file. So let's make a new capture device. Release the old one. I guess I never created it. Oh, it's called vid. Vid.release. Do this up here. and then make a new capture device. For this first one. Mm, that's not gonna work. Yeah, because this is the file name of the text file. We need we need uh, chessboard vision data piece videos and black knight for this example. 
And now for f our frame is going to be starting, I guess, at it looks like starts at one. Yeah. Frame equals one. Yeah, image vid dot read. Um, and then we show this image. Now, if we did this right, I should have the bounding box for this image here. How's the 10K YouTube sub projection? We could run that, Saling. I can run that to see. Bojang Tongues, the past, present, and future of machine learning for tabular data. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds like a good talk. I wish I could be there. Are they are they sharing those from um are they sharing theirs anywhere else that I can watch them? Uh, let's what, see what YouTube people are saying. Will this video be saved rewatching? Yes, it will be. Is data science very hard if you are not good at math? Yeah, it's pretty hard. I think those things are more correlated than like causal. You could probably get by without being good at math, but if you're good at math, it probably is correlated with you're going to be good if you're going to be good at coding and or data science stuff. But you can still do it if you have passion for it. Is there any library software that I can use to view Parquet Feather files in table format like Microsoft Excel? Uh, you can just read it in pandas and then write it as a CSV file. That's probably the best option. Yeah, I'm not. I'm on my way to 10K YouTube subs but it still seems like a really long ways away. So that's all I'll say about that. What's a good stopping point for this? Okay, so let's try to get, let's try to get a bounding box drawn on this. Cause let's be honest. When I'm streaming stuff, I'm not like gonna get a ton of things done. It's more about hanging out with everyone. So let me know if there's anything else you wanna you wanna talk about. This is what I had planned to work on tonight. But yeah, this is uh this has been fun. Let's try to get the bounding box shown and then offline I can try to actually work this into a data set that we can train a model on. And by offline, I mean like off stream. Okay, so we have this data frame. That's the X position, that's the Y position, that's the width and the height. Now keep in mind, we have this image shape, zero, which is the height. This is the width. Then we're going to also take the goal is to finish it tonight. LOL APIs finish what finish myself. I uh, know. I, I like that. You're being funny thoughts on NumPy versus parquet. What do you, what sort of data are you working with? It all depends on that, right? BB. Parquet is good for if you have a, a pandas data frame that you want to save off and just save it off and keep the data types. Um, NumPy is great if you're working with just numeric arrays. So like saving a NumPy zip a zip numpy is probably going to be pretty fast. I think it can be faster than I guess it depends on your data, how well it can be compressed. But yeah, if you're just like working with a bunch of these images and you wanted to save them off, 
save off crops or something. Just save a, a Jiza NumPy array. By the way, Ham Wonder is the latest follower. Let me know if you're a new follower tonight, how you found the channel. I'd be interested to know if you found it on YouTube, if you found it on Twitch. W times the Y times the height, height, X times the W, X times the H. What am I doing? What am I doing here? What's going on in my world? Rectangle. Now this takes X, Y, one and two. So this is gonna be X and Y, then X plus W, Y plus H. Width is going to be W and height is going to be H. Um, then we're going to do twenty by twenty. Big size. This is going to be an 
axe that and then we do add patch of this rectangle oh so close can I add an alpha here maybe it's here all right so I messed something up I, I think I have something upside down clearly oh that's right okay so I think it is it just the no it's both the X and Y like right in the center is it X times the height want to at least get like the top left position correct why do we not see people using services like glue crawlers to get schema and query the data Asking because, asking based on that most of the project are going on some cloud, we don't see much of people using this exercise. Leonardo, what do you mean? Why do we not see people using services like glue crawlers to get schema and query the data? AWS glue? Uh, I'm I'm not that familiar with that. AWS glue crawlers. Defining crawlers in AWS glue. You can use a crawler to populate AWS glue catalog with tables. This primary method. Okay, so it, it creates your data catalog based on your data database. I see what you mean. Like it crawls, it creates like a database based off of your structured data. I don't know. Yep, it can crawl flat flies, create schemas for you. I see. That's that's pretty cool. Um, that's a good question, Leonardo. I need to think about that. Do I have this wrong? Like Y, X? Boom. Nope. Is the X position height minus X? Okay, so it's nef definitely not that. I think it might have to do with that this rectangle is from the bottom left position and that our, it, our bounding box is actually defined by the top left position. So this would actually be X minus width and Y minus height, or this is W. Getting closer. Oh, width divided by two. Thomas, you're on top of this. Look at that, Thomas, for the win. Look at that. I guess that makes sense. That it would be divided by two. 
Look, we have our bounty box on our horsey. We, in theory, so here's what I'm thinking. Let's switch up the cam a little bit. So we have our bounding box on the horse. We know it's a horse because the name of the file is it's a horsey. Thomas has got my back. He's been helping me out all night. Um, in theory, we can now create a new data set with a bunch of labels from these videos that I took of, of the pieces. Not only that, but because I recorded them with a green background, we should be able to remove the background and add whatever we want in the back. Because we, we figured out how to do that. So I could, in theory, create a massive data set of these pieces because they don't change much other than the angle that you're looking at them. And I guess you could say the lighting. But um, then we could train another YOLO model on that and see how well it improves things. Because going back to uh, what we had before, let's not forget what our results look like when we ran this with the source is seven. By the way, this is done running, so it's run on all my videos. Uh, it doesn't like this. Delete all this. Do this. Thanks everyone for hanging out tonight, by the way. All right, so let's look at this one last time. Whoa, with my lower confidence threshold, it's picking up a lot more. It thinks that that pillow over there is a coming out of the the bass drum is a pawn. This is because I set the confidence threshold really low. But um Yeah, we'll be able to train a model that's going to better differentiate, I hope, the type of pieces. And then we'll see how well that that is when actually predicting on our chessboard that we have set up here. Sound good? Coolio. All right. That's next. That's next. I'm excited for the next phase. I think creating the data set offline is probably the way to go. And then uh, then we can go from there. Any other questions from anyone in chat? By the way, first time that I've tried to stream on two different systems at once, it seems to have worked. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll try to do this again next time. I still need to like make my setup a little bit more pro looking. I just have, uh, you know, a setup in OBS that I created myself and it's not that professional looking. It'd be nice to improve that if I have time ever. But aside from that, all that matters is you all out there who are my friends and hanging out as we, as we do this stream. So let's find someone to raid on Twitch because that's always fun. Hey, Nick is streaming. He's back online. Let's, sh should we raid Nick? Databasics is also just chatting. Cyforce one We've got Chrissy Codes. We've raided all these people before. I'm just gonna raid Nick. Cause he's my, my man. He's only, oh, he's been on for two hours. Okay, let's do this raid. Thanks all for hanging out. I'll see you next time. Um, oh, some things before I leave. Exclamation point YouTube will take you to my YouTube channel. Please uh, check me out there if you haven't already. Exclamation point Discord links you to the Discord chat where you can come hang out, talk with us. 
And uh, that's about it. I don't have a competition going on now, but maybe we'll be launching a Kaggle competition here soon. Let's do this raid. Maybe let's ask on Discord. I'm going to assume the answer is yes. Here we go. All right, everyone. Thanks. Bring, bring the hype, bring the positive energy as we raid and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.